right so let's talk about reaction energy diagrams right? every reaction has a profile right and it follows a particular kinetic profile you know we just talked about kinetics with R being converted into P or reactants being converted into products and so we can express the profile using what we call a reaction energy diagram and it gives us an idea of how much energy is necessary to go from reactants to products so notice okay here's my uh, reactants here right and my energy diagram is simply a curve now I want you to pay close attention because remember we said that reactants as reactants disappear the products appear so what I'm doing in the energy diagram is I have to the curve here expresses how much energy it takes to go from the short again reactants go over the curve to products notice reactants has disappeared products has appeared all right so there's some key terms here that we need to get kind of out in the open number one is it took some energy to go from the reactants right up here to the top of the curve and then from the top of the curve down to the products so the amount of energy it takes to get from reactants to the top of the curve is what's known as the activation energy that's the that's the term here delta G double dagger all right that takes me from my reactants to the top of the curve now at the top of the curve this is another very important uh, term It's called the transition state all right in the transition state this is where bonds are broken and bonds are made so you have partially broken bonds you have partially made bonds and we're going to talk more about this in class okay so don't don't get freaked out uh, by the terminology let's just learn the terminology and the concepts first and then we all apply it in class all right so the transition state is just what it means it says well the meaning is what it says it's a state of transition as you go from reactants to products right this is happening somewhere in the mechanism okay and so I'm here at the transition state notice it's the highest point on the curve it's the highest energy point on the curve and it's basically midway between right the reactants and the products right so it's the highest energy point on the curve and it's here okay and then I go from transition state down to products all right so activation energy transition state from this curve that's what I want you to take away from this slide the activation energy is the amount of energy uh, that it takes to um, go from reactants to transition state is also called a barrier sometimes you'll hear it called a barrier because it controls the rate of the reaction right the activation energy determines the rate at which R turns into P right if, if the activation energy is very high then that means it's going to take a long time to go from reactants to transition state and from transition state to product if the activation energy is low then it doesn't take as long to go from uh, reactants to transition state okay all right so we also we like I said we call it a barrier it's all but it but the technical term for it is activation energy this is my reaction energy diagram uh, you see here these uh, here on the x-axis and the y-axis the y-axis is energy and the x-axis is time and in, in some textbooks you'll see this written as the reaction coordinate but this is basically time right and so over time you go from reactants to products and the amount of energy required to go from reactants to products is measured here on the y-axis all right so let's compare some energy diagrams because there's some terms that we need to be familiar with one of them is exothermic and the other is endothermic and in class we're going to figure we're going to calculate uh, whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic based on um, delta H which we'll talk about in a minute all right so here we are going from reactants to products reactants disappearing products appearing and then on the other side we go from reactants to products with the reactants disappearing here and the products appearing over here all right so let's compare these two curves what the first thing you'll notice is that this one has a much lower activation energy than this curve right so this curve here 
has a much higher activation energy. All right. So the activation energy here is lower. The activation energy here is much higher. All right. In this particular case, this reaction is known as exothermic. All right. It means that it gives off energy as the reaction goes to completion. All right. You'll see in the textbook also exergonic. That's the, it, it, it means the same thing. All right. What you'll notice is that the products are lower in energy than your reactants. Okay. So for exothermic reaction, the products are lower in energy than the reactants. We're going to talk more about this on the next slide uh, because there's more to that uh, terminology. Uh, than just products being lower lower in energy than the reactants, right? That means something, all right? And so over on this side, you see, again, the activation energy is much higher, and then the products are higher in energy than the reactants. And so on this side, we call this uh, type of reaction endothermic. You've heard this in GCHEM probably. Uh, what it means is that I have to put energy into the reaction to get it to go. All right. So one one of the key differences between an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction is that an exothermic reaction has a lower activation energy than an endothermic reaction. All right. So let's keep talking about our um, reaction energy diagrams. And here we're going to compare uh, what we call uh, delta G double dagger, which is the activation energy, and then delta G naught. And that's going to get us to a point where we can discuss kinetics versus thermodynamics. All right. So we talked about already uh, delta G double dagger, the activation energy, being the energy it takes to go from reactants to transition state, and that it controls the rate of the reaction. All right. Uh, and then for exothermic reaction, this uh, delta G double dagger is much smaller than delta G uh, double dagger for an endothermic reaction, which takes a considerable uh, considerably more energy to go from reactants to the transition state. All right, and so let's look at another term that we need to defer, de de um, define here. I'm sorry, uh, but one of the, the take-home messages here is this: that delta G double dagger is lower for exothermic uh, for exothermic reaction than it is uh, for an endothermic reaction. All right, so there's another term we need to. Uh, Described from this reaction energy diagram, right, and that is delta G naught, which is the Gibbs free energy. I mentioned on on the previous slide about reactants and products being having a, a being different in energy. All right, so for an uh, exothermic reaction, delta G naught is here, right. That's the difference for any reaction between reactants and products. All right. So here, I said earlier, the products in for exothermic reaction are lower in energy than that of the reactants. And so for a exothermic reaction, delta G, the Gibbs free energy is negative, right? If you take the difference uh, in energy between the products and the reactants and you calculate uh, delta G by subtracting um, the energy of the reactants from the energy of the products, right? Then you would get a negative number. If this number is smaller than this number and you subtract reactants from products, then you get a negative number. So delta G naught is negative for an exothermic reaction. It's positive for a reaction that's endothermic, right? So that means that uh, over here, if this number is higher, than this number and I subtract uh, the, the energy of the reactants from the energy of the products then I will get a positive number all right and so that's another way to talk about a reaction that's exothermic it is that it has a negative delta G naught or negative Gibbs free energy whereas a reaction that's endothermic has a positive uh, Gibbs free energy or positive delta G naught all right, so we see for exothermic reactions some things we can take away from these curves. Number one, uh, exothermic reactions have a much lower activation energy than endothermic reactions. And then number two, uh, exothermic reactions have a negative Gibbs free energy or negative delta G as opposed to an endothermic reaction which has a positive delta G. All right, so how do we, we relate the two? Well, 
the reaction rate or how fast um, R is converted into P or how fast R changes into P is controlled by delta G double dagger. That's controlled by the activation energy. And if you recall from G chem, the Arrhenius equation where the uh, rate constant here K is um, equal to A um, times E to the minus delta G over RT. So all of these are kinetic, right? This is little k, all right? And when you're doing, when you're comparing kinetics and thermodynamics, what you're comparing is little k, which is the rate constant, versus big K, which is the equilibrium constant, all right? So the rate is determined by the activation energy. And if we look over here, the equilibrium is determined by uh, delta G, the Gibbs free energy. All right, the extent of reaction is determined by the Gibbs free energy. All right, so uh, you remember this equation from G chem as well: delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Right, and so we're going to talk in class about how to relate delta G and delta H as far as a reaction is concerned. Okay, so this is the last slide dealing with um, reaction energy diagrams and uh, the next video will be dealing with the Hammond postulate and then that'll be it and you can uh, hit me with any questions that you have and we'll discuss this more in class on tomorrow.